Okay, for geometry, lesson 3.8, it's actually more algebra review. So we are going to determine whether lines are parallel or perpendicular, and then we're going to write equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So these are a little bit hard to see. Here you go. So the first um, part of your notes just states that any two vertical lines, so here's two vertical lines, and remember they're in the same plane. So any two vertical lines or any two horizontal lines in the same plane, that does not look very horizontal, sorry, are parallel. So if they're both exactly vertical or if they're both exactly horizontal, they are parallel. And we've already talked a lot about parallel, so I know you know what that means. If two non-vertical lines, so these might be just like this, Okay, if two non-vertical, so they're not up and down, they're not vertical, but they are parallel. So if any two non-vertical lines are parallel, then their slopes are equal. So um, if this slope was up one over two and it was parallel, then this slope would also be up one over two. So if this slope is half, then this slope is also half. If they are parallel, they have the same slope. All right, and then any horizontal line, any horizontal line and vertical line are perpendicular. So if it's exactly horizontal and if it's exactly vertical, then it is perpendicular, which means it meets in 90 degree angles. If two lines are perpendicular, then their slopes are opposite reciprocals. And just like that, vice versa, if two lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, then they are perpendicular. So if you have two lines like this, um, and this line's slope was up two over three, then if this line's slope is negative three over two, then they are opposites, meaning negative positive, and they are reciprocals, meaning the numerator and denominator flip spots, then these two would be perpendicular. So in order for us to find perpendicular lines, we calculate their slopes and we see that they are opposite and reciprocals of each other. And just a really quick review of like, for example, a whole number. Let's say this slope was four. So let's say it's super steep, it's up four over one. Then that means this slope would have to be negative and it would have to be four hidden invisible over one. So one over four. So in order for these to be perpendicular, a slope of four would have to intersect with a slope of negative one fourth. Okay, let's go to the next page. The next page is a little hard to see. Um, I'm gonna try to zoom in just a little. It wasn't copied very dark. Hopefully you can see it better on your worksheet. Um, so we're trying to determine if these two lines are parallel. We can look at them and we can see that they look parallel. Um, however, what I would do is I would count their slopes. And if they have the same slope, then they are parallel. So from this dot to this dot, it looks like they're both negative. You can kind of eyeball that they're not going to be parallel, but let's make sure. So the slope from here to here is two there, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it looks like it's negative seven over two. All right, and then this slope is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over one, two, three negative nine over three, remember it's going down. So, and you can simplify this, negative nine divided by three is negative three. So this slope is negative seven halves and this slope is negative three. So no, these are definitely not parallel. And our expl explanation is their slopes are different because in order to be parallel, their slopes would have to be completely the exact same. All right. Um, let's say I don't give you a graph. You can't count it like we did rise over run here. All I do is give you two points that were on one line and two points that were on another line, and I want to know if they are parallel. So it is a good thing that the previous lesson reviewed how to calculate slope from two points. It was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So knowing that, 
we can take our first two points and calculate its slope, and then our next two points and calculate its slope. So let's do this first line. It would be two minus six over negative one, oops, minus negative 13. All right, two minus six is negative four, and negative one minus negative 13 is 12. You can simplify negative 4 twelfths to negative 1 third. All right, let's try to calculate the slope of this other line. So y2 minus y1 would be 7 minus 6 over 6 minus 3. 7 minus 6 is 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. So it's close. I mean, they're both 1 thirds, but this is a negative 1 third and this is a positive 1 third. And to be parallel, they have to be the exact, not one negative and one positive. So once again, are these parallel? No. Their slopes are different. Okay, now let's move on to perpendicular. Quick review, perpendicular is opposite reciprocal slopes. So let's count rise over run and see if we have opposite reciprocals. So for line one, it is gonna be a negative slope and it is one, two, three, four, five, six over one, two, three, four. So it's negative six over four, which simplifies to negative three halves. And then on this line, we've got these two points. So let's count rise over run here. One, two, three, four, five, six over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So six over nine, they both divide by three to simplify. That would be two thirds. Okay, let's look at our two fractions. One is negative and one is positive, so they are opposites. And one is three over two and the other one is two over three, which means they are also reciprocals. So yes, these lines are perpendicular. And the explanation is that their slopes are opposite reciprocals. And opposite reciprocals I mean they're perpendicular. It means this is an exact 90 degree right angle. All right, and then let's try this one. There's no graph. So once again, we are gonna be left to use the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 formula in order to come up with the slopes. And we're gonna see if they are opposite reciprocals. So let's do the first one. Negative one minus seven over three minus two that would be negative 8 over 1, which is just negative 8. All right, our second line is 7 minus 6 over 8 minus negative 2, which would be 1 tenth. And Negative eight and one tenth aren't even opposites or reciprocals. So are they perpendicular? No. Their slopes are not opposite reciprocals. All right, let's go on to the third page where we actually get to write some equations now. So at the top, it says, what is an equation for a line that would be parallel to this line? And it contains the point negative one eight. Okay, the first thing I want you to know is that the only thing we care about in this equation is that the relationship is parallel, meaning it will have the same slope, negative three. Nothing else will be the same. The minus five, we don't even care about. In fact, you can scratch it out if you want. It will have nothing to do with it. The only thing we care about is that it's parallel, so therefore the slope will be the same, negative three. So here's how I would start this problem. I would start it with y equals mx plus b, except we know our m is gonna be negative three, our slope, because they're the same, because they're parallel. And then 
we are going to borrow the negative 1 and 8 for our x and y coordinates to just for a minute plug into x and y so that we can solve to get our new b, our new y-intercept. So let's borrow 8 for y. Let's borrow negative 1 for x. And let's solve to see what b would equal. Negative 3 times 1 is positive 3. You would subtract 3 from both sides. b equals 5. Okay, now that we have our slope and we have our new y-intercept, now you can put it all together and tell me the equation for the line that would be parallel. It would be y equals negative 3x plus our b, which is 5. All right, um, let's try the same thing, except this time perpendicular. All right, a line that's perpendicular. So we are going to flip it and make it opposite. So the opposite reciprocal of 1 fifth is negative 5 over 1, or just negative 5. So I want to use the same equation, except instead of 1 fifth, I want to use negative 5. And I don't know what b is, so I'm just going to use it plus b. So we're going to write y equals negative 5x plus b. And again, we're going to borrow this point because we know it has to go through this point. So this is going to be one of the solutions. So we're going to borrow it to just plug into our equation. So y is negative 4, and x is 15. All right, negative 5 times 15 is negative 75. Bring down your plus b equals negative 4. We're going to add 75 to both sides. b equals 71. So now we have our equation that's perpendicular to this one because we now have our slope and our new y-intercept. So it is y equals negative 5x plus 71. That's a 1 that I didn't circle very well. All right, um, this is a good time to pause the video and try the last two parallel and perpendiculars on your own, and then fast forward and skip in my video to see if you did it right. If you're not quite ready to do it on your own, parallel again means same slope. So I'm going to do y equals negative x. I'll, I'll go ahead and put negative 1, x plus b. And we are going to borrow negative 5 for x. And we are going to borrow 3 for y. Negative 5 times 1, negative 1 is positive 5. I will subtract 5 from both sides. And so b equals negative 2. So put it all together. A line parallel would be y equals negative x minus 2. And then on the last one, it's perpendicular. So perpendicular, again, means opposite reciprocal of negative 3, which would be positive 1 third. And so we're just going to write y equals 1 third x plus b. And we're going to borrow these x and y's for a sec. 7 is y. Negative 3 is x. Let's solve it to find out what b is. Negative 3 times 1 third, sorry, yes, is negative 1 plus b. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to have to write tiny. Add 1 to both sides. b equals 8. So put it all together in your equation. y equals 1 third x plus 8.